What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back again with the 1940 Chevy. We're going to try to wrap up most of what's left in this video if there is enough time. And if you're tired of seeing the 1940 Chevy, I'm really, really sorry. Truly, I am. I'm actually actively looking for more cars. I just put an offer in on a Plymouth Prowler today, which I it's kind of a dream car of mine since childhood. Every child Every young person saw a Plymouth Prowler and they wanted one, okay? They did, and I'm trying to get one for the channel. I've sold everything. The 65 Cadillac is gone. The, I mean, actually everything is gone. The Range Rover is gone. It's all gone with the exception of the 1940 Chevy, the Kia, which has no title still, and the, uh, the S-Class 550. That's it. So we've got to get work done on the 40 because that is the Power Tour car. Power Tour is June 13th, and I have to leave a day or two early. So I gotta get this wrapped up. And to help us with this is Michael from Santa's Workshop. Ho, 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 ho. Where's your link gonna be, I wonder, do you think? Um, yeah, down there. I bet it is. It's gonna be <laughs> below the video. Go check out Michael from Santa's Workshop. We've got, we've got, a little bit to do today. It's all, the thing is, it's all little stuff. All little stuff. But it's those little things that seem to always take so long to get done. So Michael brought us these Thrush uh, turbo mufflers and we're gonna swap him for our, or is it Magnaflow that's Magnaflows, on it? Magnaflows, yes. We got some, they're nice sounding Magnaflows, but good God almighty, they, I get a headache. So he's offered a solution. These are brand new. He's never used them. And he said, hey, we'll swap them out. And hopefully they sound a little quieter. I don't. I never thought I'd say that. I want mufflers that are quieter <laughs> because it gives me a damn headache rolling down the road. You've got 2,000 miles to go. Yes. It's a long drive. And I don't want to have to shout at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long drive. So we're going to swap those out. That's one thing that we got to do today. Next, I, uh, I decided to do a delete kit on this Cadillac air filter housing. Even though I think it is interesting looking, it's not painted the same color, so it kind of throws it off a little yeah. bit. Uh, the color's off. I know this is kind of like really, eh, chrome. It was 40 bucks. Right. It's $40. So. <laughs> but you're looking for an aluminum thin one to go with all this other aluminum. Yes, I want to make that very clear. I am currently looking for an aluminum finned one that will match all of this because you see that's got fins on it. There's fins on the one in the back as well. I want the aluminum fin, but for now, we're just gonna go with the chrome one because it was cheap, it was in stock, and it's Edelbrock, which matches the engine, which I had no idea Edelbrock manufactured engines. Oh yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I knew they made parts, kits, heads, cams. I think the majority of the engines on overhauling was supplied by Edelbrock. Really? I believe so. I, I see, I, this is new to me. I saw Edelbrock valve covers. I was like, oh, okay, somebody really dressed her up. No. Nope. I've got the receipt for it in the book. <laughs> That's a $10,000, 400, and what was it, 40, 410 horsepower? 408 torque. Yeah. Yeah. That is a $10,000 engine. Well, you got to remember, that's just the engine. That's just the engine. That's not the accessories on the front. That's not the fuel injection. Nope. They used ARP bolts and studs. Mm -hmm. They you that fuel injection. I looked at this. This is three to four thousand dollars in fuel injection. Oh. The transmission was two thousand plus all the accessories. Has a TCI uh, flex plate. Okay. Someone put a lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money went into this car. But I could sit here and brag on the car all day. I love the car. In case you're not noticing, I really, really love the car. But here's what we got. Other than, I, I said we got so much to do and I've got an air filter. That's, <laughs> the air filter's part of it. We got some uh, Dex Merc. Is this Dex 3? Hopefully it is. I think it is. We'll find out. If not, I've got some Dex 3 because it is a tad low on fluid. I also need to retorque the oil pan bolts, yes. transmission pan bolts. We have new vacuum line to replace the broken one that went to the uh, brake booster. Yes. Now here's the fun part. Which way does this blow? That's the wrong way. Guys, I want you to listen. Can you hold this? Okay, that leaks. That goes to the brake booster. For some odd reason, at low RPMs, like at idle, it feels like I have no power brakes and I gotta really mash on the brakes. Check out what I got right here. This is a new one, right? So I can blow on it. 
Now if I blow the other way, don't don't bust a vein. <laughs> <laughs> bust an artery, <laughs> drop right here in front of you. <laughs> All right, so I think we found the problem. Who would have thought? Yeah. Who would have thought? And I diagnosed that myself. I'm really proud of myself. I found that myself along with that vacuum line. We got inner tie rods that have got to get done. Yes. I'm gonna change the oil and we got a fresh K&N filter. The fuel filter is on the way. I also got a K&N fuel filter to go oh, with nice. it. With synthetic media. There are a couple plug wires that are awful close to the exhaust and they're starting to turn a little crispy. This right here was 40 bucks for oh, this really? DEI. Yeah, it's good stuff. I saw them on Power Tour last year. Okay. Yeah, DEI, they had their own booth and everything. They're they're real big on the Power Tour. 40 bucks, that should cover all of the wires that are anywhere near the exhaust. Right. And prevent them from, you know, doing a Chevelle this nice. year. Next. Oh, there it went that. The belt. I want a fresh belt because the one on the car is 20 years old. This, this will resolve that. Um, this is for the brakes. I'm gonna try, if I have time, to bleed the brakes. And this adhesive is for some door weather stripping that fell off. And I think that's it, other than some headliner. I need to put the little glue stuff on the headliner yeah. to hold it in a little bit. So now that I've taken up a bunch of your time with all the things we need to get done, why don't we actually get to it? What do you What do you think we should do first? Um, There's so much. It's well, we could do the mufflers. Do it Let's do the mufflers. The or the tie rods. Let's do the mufflers. I'd mufflers. rather do mufflers. Okay. We'll do mufflers first. We'll do a before and after so you can hear it now. And then you'll hear it when we put the new mufflers on. Sounds good. All right, we're going to do a cold start. And then we're going to shut it off after he revs it up a couple times. And we'll throw the new mufflers on and do another technically cold start. Ready? Go for it. was an exercise wasn't it yeah we got the muffler sh uh, swapped out and no huh <laughs> <laughs> there was a slight oversight on both of our parts here well they look the same they did i i never thought to take them out and actually line them up just to make sure but we got the first muffler off the second one was half off and i was standing there and i said you know what are those the same size so we decided after the fact to try them out. No, they're not the same. Well, what is it? Short about four inches? Yeah, four to six inches. Something it's, like that. it's a lot. Yeah, well, um, we've learned. We've learned. So now the factory mufflers are back on again. <laughs> and now we can move on. This would be a great time. There's so much we can do while the car's in the air. That's right. We could change the oil. Might as well drain the oil. Um, tie rods would be a good thing to do yep. while the tie car rods. is up in the air. So, you know, there's more to do, guys, and that brake line. We forgot, yes. we fired it up earlier for you guys to hear the cold start. It doesn't have, the throttle body's got this massive gaping hole in it because we don't have the brake booster hooked up. It ran like it did when you first got it. Did it? Like yeah. a vacuum leak. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, well, this is another thing we can resolve while we're here. I've got my, uh, Oh, and these wires, most of the stuff we need to do is actually underneath. Underneath. I wanted to bleed the brakes too, just uh, to do that, I gotta take the wheels off. Ugh. Well, maybe, I don't know, I'll think about it. But I wanna wrap up some of these wires too while we're under here, and this needs to get put on while we're, there's so much to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do though, so I'm gonna, before I forget again, is I'm gonna get this vacuum line connected with that new, uh, that new piece, that new rubber hose that goes right 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 there want to get that in there and get that line run up this way up towards the motor all right i gotta start filming some of this man yeah but this is so most of the stuff i'm doing is so mundane under here that like what did i just get through doing tightening bolts yep on the oil pan and the transmission pan mm -hmm. you know well, we did discuss something what what did we discuss i already forgot okay <laughs> the bolts on the engine pan were good and tight yes but it's got a silicone gasket. Uh, gasket. And those silicone gaskets have a uh, like a plastic washer in them, so yep. you can't squeeze them too tight. So you can go ahead and crank those down tight when you put them on. Now a cork gasket, you can't do that to, because if you squeeze it too tight, it's just going to push out. Yeah, and you'll bend your pan. Right. Well, the transmission had the cork gasket, 
How far around did you have to go on that? Yeah, I had to go about a quarter turn, about sometimes a little more. Right, and that's just because of the heat cycles. Yeah. And so after you do a pan gasket, it's nothing for it to drip a little bit yeah. until you tighten them up some more. Well, they're all tightened up. I made sure everything was tightened up under and it's good to go. The new vacuum line for the brake booster is installed, but I say well, we show down, them. Down low, not up there. Yeah, we got to hook it up up there once we get up top. Uh, so next, we're going to do tie rods and tie oil rods change. And oil change yes. So I think we'll, si well, since we're moving from the back to the front, we started back here. Right. And now we've gotten up to the oil pan. Okay. We'll change the oil, put the new filter, we'll pre-fill the K&N filter. We'll get that on, then we can move on to the tie rods. Okay. Which should be super freaking simple to do. They should be. Um, well, shoot, I should you just You just did it. I do this every time, every time, and it takes something that should have been, I swear it's a curse. You <laughs> jinx yourself when you say it. I know these guys want to see the oil that comes out of it, so let me get my oil pan and everything together, and we can pull off that filter, pour, uh, pull off the drain plug on the oil pan, and we'll see. Well, I bet it's just golden oil. Oh, yeah. Beautiful golden oil. We're going back with, I know I got it over here, so there it is. Hopefully these are full. I should have checked, but I didn't. Nope, that's not full. Well, that's three quarters full. So there's one. And then I've got another one. Maybe this one's full. I think we're gonna need a full one. That's brand new. Why don't we just use that? Cause I don't okay. think it's gonna hold more than five quarts, do you? This is one gallon, so it's oh, four, four quarts. Four. Okay, so then we'll we probably need it. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right, we're going back with the Rotella and the k &N filter. So let me get my stuff under here and we'll bring you along. We'll do a quick oil change on this beautiful old car. All right, guys, we're gonna see what's in this oil pan here. Should, should we tell them what you just said was gonna be in here? What, milkshake? Milkshake, he said milkshake. Well, because you said it was going so easy. <laughs> it is, it, what, well, yeah, never mind. Here we go. Well, that sucker's in there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's a long... Good Lord! I'm surprised that's, that's not hitting the rod. That's what I was just saying. <laughs> we may pull it out and find a mushroomed end on it. All right, here we go. Time to see what's in it. Can I do it without getting oil all over myself? Sure. Oh, that looks pretty through that lens. Does it? Oh yeah. Good, it's good. Got lots glowing right through it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Golden oil. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, I see what. Yeah. See, I put that light over there on purpose. Yeah, you just did for good. this. Yeah. I really didn't, but I'll take credit for it. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. Look at that. Oh yeah. Look at that. Is, is that some glitter? <laughs> get on glitter in this. <laughs> this thing. Yes, you know, it could be some glitter. There could be. It's got 2,000 miles on it. She's still breaking in. Bearings is still, well, everything should be seated by now, but. You would think. And I'm sure the braking oil was changed. Boy, I hope the braking oil was changed. Oh, I'm sure it was. <laughs> 2,000 miles? Certainly it was. Yeah. All right, we'll let her drain, guys, and we'll take the filter off and we'll swap in. I don't know what filter that is. We're putting a can in back on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, next, the filter. Oh yeah, that's nice. What was that what you were saying about getting oil on yourself? <sighs> well, <laughs> we have a we have a pro protec <laughs> pro protec sounds like the name of a condom protec <laughs> pro the protec PTL five one zero six zero slash one six two. Well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, it's all over the exhaust now too. We'll make sure it's not double gasket to take a look. We got a gasket on here? Yes. All right, good deal. So no problems there. I'm gonna clean this mess that it just made all over my freaking engine. Everywhere, it, it made a huge mess. I'm gonna clean that up, button it up with a K&N, put the plug in it, and then we'll move on to the tie rods. Just don't let me forget to put oil in it before we start it. That's true. You guys help me out. Make sure I remember to uh, put oil in it before I start it. Put your comments down below whether or not he forgets. <laughs> Do you know what I have not forgotten? What's that? To put oil in it before we start it. That's good because I had. Did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't. I have not forgotten that we got to put oil in this thing. I want to show you these guys what we're uh, 
what we've already done. We're about to take the wheels off. We're going to lower this down and change out the inner tie rods. Yep. And everybody's going to say, I cheaped out on the outer tie rods. Couldn't find them. Yeah. Uh, unless I want to drive way the hell out yonder, uh, and I can just have them shipped to me. And there's nothing wrong with these. It sucks. I would have preferred to do them all at the same time. Right. But I'm kind of impatient and in a hurry. So we'll do the inners. Randy, impatient and in a hurry? I know. Yeah. And yeah, nobody will believe it. Okay. We're going to get you guys up under here. And I'm going to show you. We, uh, let me see if I can get you guys up here. We got the new oil filter on. That k in. We found out that uh, that filter that was on it before is actually a Wix. Yes. I was making fun of it, but it's it's a Wix filter. Now there's, there's another thing I did under here, guys. I don't know how well you could see it, but up here, you see this wrap, this heat shrink looking stuff? It's because these are the spark plug wires, man, and they run a... Let me see if I can get you guys up here a little better. I ran it all the way to the motor mount and then all the way back because those are where the spark plug wires are. Why won't this focus? There we go. Yeah, those are where the spark plug wires run, and they run right next to that exhaust, man. So we got them covered up. So all that's left is taking the front wheels off, changing the inner tie rods, yes. hopefully bleeding the brakes, hooking up the vacuum line, filling it with oil. Was that it? I think that's it. That might be it. Oh, and I put a little silicon, a little dab of silicon. Where is it? Over, over this right here. You probably never see it if I hadn't told you about it right there that little uh, speedometer drive gear was leaking just a tad bit right here at the center and it's already tacked up real nice real nice very nice see didn't even get any on my finger so it won't leak anymore she's coming along it's a coming bleeding the brakes is high on my priority list even though i don't think it needs it it's just might as well put some fresh fluid in it bleed the brakes and uh we're, we're getting there. So easy. This car is so easy and simple to work on. I can't get over how easy this is. You know what you just did. <laughs> Let's find out. Right now. <laughs> you shouldn't say that. I just started recording. <laughs> I was about to tell him how you did it the correct way. <laughs> of course that was the correct way. What are you talking about? <laughs> so we both kind of think that somebody put a used front end on this car. That rack and pinion, everything on this car looks new except for this. And look at those, that, yeah. And wasn't the inner on this side way worse? Yes. Yeah, the inner on this side was. This is the side of the tire that was, the bearings were loose on. That well, doesn't seem that bad. I mean, it's much worse with the wheel on though. These are still nice and tight, look at this. I mean, I gotta. So the outers, like I said, they're still very good. Yeah. How's yours? It's a little good. looser? It's good. Good? I'll clean this up. Clean some of this up while we're under here just to make it look a little better. But uh, now we need to... This one, see, somebody's already put a new inner tie rod on this one before. Yep. You know what I mean? That's not factory. So I agree with you. I think this front end assembly may have been installed from something else. Yeah. To save... Well... They probably put 40, 50 grand into this thing. It was like, good God, man, I need a break. Well, and here's <laughs> another thing. It could have been a completely re redone, redo. Yeah, yeah. And that could have been what was under it to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Well, either way, it's going to work. New inner tie rods are going to make all the difference on this thing. Yes. And as long as we measure close, it'll be just fine. Yeah. Uh, I will take it. I promise you guys, I'm going to take it for an alignment. I, I swear. I'm not going to drive it across the country with a bad alignment. <laughs> um, I absolutely am gonna, I won't do it in this video because there's just not gonna be any time. We've still got quite a bit to get done and very little time to do it. But this is gonna be super simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get this off of this bellow here. We'll slide this out and uh, we'll show you guys what it looks like on the inside. And we've got one inner tie rod coming out. And we'll have one more left to go. He's got his side. That's the really bad one, if I remember right. Yep. Yeah, that one was really, really bad. So that's like the most important one to get out of there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good Lord. Look at the play in that. <laughs> that was kind of rough. One down. 
One to go. Weapon of choice, vice grips. Oh. You all right? Yep. Your wrist? I hit my head on the grill and I was like, oh, <laughs> is my grill okay? That's no, I'm what kidding. I was worried about. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought your wrist, man. No, it was more my elbow than anything. Jeez. It's a tough car. The grill ain't even hurt. I have to two hand it. Now my face is in the grill. <laughs> There we go. I mean, I head planted in that thing. I thought for sure I'd bent something. There we go. Ooh. That's why they wouldn't come off. Were they pinned? No, red lock tight. Red? Red. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so how will we get this back together to where it's almost right? How are we, how are we gonna know? It's called the tape measure. Cause you can't just throw this stuff on here and go down the road. Well, you, you can. And, well, you, you, you can, can, but it won't be right. <laughs> it'll, you think it steered bad before. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be way worse. You get two tires going opposite directions. Yeah, so. Uh, just take the tape measure. Find you a set point. Say you're right there. Yeah. And measure from there. Measure there to the end. Make sure your depth inside is the same, which these they are the same. So that's all you need. The nice thing is, is these new ones actually have a, a square for you to bite onto. Whereas these, to get these off, those had, those were awkward. Those were real awkward. What do you see? Oh, dude, those are the wrong tie rods. Somebody cut them with a hacksaw. That's been sawed off. I guarantee you this is off of a, it's the same yeah. rack. <laughs> that, I, that I brought. Somebody saw the tie. Instead of putting new tie rod ends for the right car, make sure these line. <laughs> I hope these are the same. A hair different. This is the size it should have been. Sorry. This is the size it should have been. This is the new one. Yep. So they cut off just a tad bit too much. Well, let's see if it'll go down to... 13 and a half? 13 and a half. Yeah, because if not, we're in trouble. <laughs> no, you got a saw. Oh, um, yeah, I do. I do, <laughs> I do have... I can't believe that. Somebody... Oh, I wish I could... You know what would be great is if this damn thing would... I have the hardest time getting this to focus for you guys. There it is. Look at that, where somebody just... They hacked that sucker right off. Moment of truth right now. Well, I'm going to have to lengthen it back out. Really? Yeah. So it fits. But i got to take it off anyways and put this on. You don't okay. put that on without it. <laughs> well, we were just test fitting it anyway. We were test fitting. Yeah, because we were concerned that it might not fit. Yeah, it's no problem. It fits. Perfect. Perfect. All right, 13 and a half on this side, 13 and 5 eighths on the other side. It's just a matter of putting this stuff back together. I do have... I'm not going to do what they did and use red Loctite. Thank you. Because <laughs> he busted his head getting that one off. We're going to use the... Uh, what? What is the deal with this camera, man? There we go. We're going to... It's It goes glitchy sometimes. We're going to use the Threadlocker Blue Medium Strength. This stuff does not rotate. So, I mean, really, you don't even need Threadlocker, in no. my opinion. But I just put it on there as good measure. But you don't need a lot. <laughs> And you damn sure don't need red. That's insane, guys. We're going to button this back up. And uh, we're almost there. Yep. Yeah. All right, guys. We've got the new inner tie rods installed. Everything is buttoned up. And it's actually looking... It's looking pretty good under here. Um, my next step, even though it's probably not necessary, it's just out of an abundance of caution, is to go ahead and just do a quick bleed. We're not talking like pump, pump, pump and bleed. I'm talking just a relatively quick, maybe two bleeds per caliper. You know, open, close, open, close, done. Um, the fronts are super easy because there's only one bleed screw somewhere on the, uh, somewhere on the back there. Anyway, one on each, super easy to do. The back ones are a little more complicated. It's very strange too, because the back brakes on this are the Willwoods with the two-piece rotors and you said those are what six piston calipers four piston four piston, four piston calipers on the rears that's uh 
that's crazy but you've got a bleed screw on the outside top and a bleed screw on the inside top so we're gonna have to kind of double bleed those but aside from that that's all i got left to do is bleeding the brakes hooking up the vacuum line for the brake booster filling it with oil should probably fill it with oil pretty quick yeah uh just to <laughs> just for safety as soon as it hits the ground fill yes it full of oil. we'll fill it full of oil um she's i don't want to say that it's almost done but it's close yeah i gotta i want to drain the uh power steering fluid right and just fill it with fresh because the power steering fluid it looked a little dark yeah it it didn't look healthy no everything else looks healthy just yeah. power steering fluid looked a little ugh. so i got some fresh power steering fluid we can throw in it uh, we're close, guys. It's it's almost time to button it all back up, fire it up, take it for a spin, and I'll bet the brakes work 100,000 times better. Oh, yeah. And I'll bet the steering is much more predictable. Well, we've got the front end button back up. No plating tie rods anymore. No. And look at those wheels. Santa's been over here cleaning up these wheels. Mm -mm. Those things look... Golly. Can't beat a Krager SS. Oh, man. These wheels look nice. We bled the front. Yes. We did it without you guys. Sorry. Uh, and now we're going to move to the back. Although the front had no air. None. The fluid is clean. The fluid's clean. But like I said, I'm just one of those, you know, brakes are important. It doesn't take but an extra 15, 20 minutes to take the wheels off and just pump the brake pedal a couple times. Yep. So now putting brake fluid back into it. That's a different story. We may want to check that before we get to the back. Well, I filled it up the other day. Okay. And we just did the front. It's a dual chamber. Right. So the back should still be full. And we're just doing a couple of squirts. Yeah, so. I'm doing, I'm doing, literally, I pump it five times. He opens the valve and then let it out, close it, do it again. Twice is it, twice per side on the back. Right. So maybe it wouldn't hurt to just, I don't know. I think it'll be fine. You think it'll be fine? Oh, yeah. Okay, it'll be fine then. It's not as much fluid as you think it goes through there. The front was good. The fluid's clean, of course, because everything's new. Yeah. But it doesn't hurt to just double-check everything. Wheels are cleaned up. We're going to drop the front down, bring the back up, take the wheels off the back, bleed the back brakes, and then it's just a matter of buttoning up a few little loose ends under the hood. and mm -hmm. oh, Oil. Pouring oil in oil. it. Power steering fluid. Oh yeah, that's right. I got to drain. I'm not doing like a, f a major flush, but I'm just going to drain the fluid and I'm going to refill. Hopefully there's a big hose under there somewhere. There's two big hoses going right out through here. Good. So hopefully they connect somewhere down under there. I can just disconnect one of those hoses, take the cap off, drain it out, put it back on, fill it up with some fresh fluid. All right. She's close. Close. Very. We still haven't put oil in it. No. But the brakes are bled. All the wheels are put back on. The master cylinder's been filled. Mm-hmm. And we are down to draining the power steering fluid. Yes. That's it. Should be a piece of cake, man. It's super easy. <laughs> He's getting on to me for saying that because we all know how it goes. The only problem I have with this is when this power steering fluid comes out, I don't know if you can see it, but right there is your line. It's going to, unless I take a piece of cardboard or something, and help to funnel it down, which I might do. This is gonna make a big mess. Well, I mean, how, how tall can you raise that bucket up? Oh, the bucket goes most of the way up. It's already leaking. It's gonna come right down in between. Well, let, you know what? Everything cleans up with degreaser. That's right. All right, well, remember he said that. Now, now wait on it. No, he, raise your bucket up first. Uh, oh yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> It's been a long day, man. For the viewers, unfortunately, we didn't record a whole heck of a lot. And I'm sorry for that. It's just one of those things where we're running kind of short on time. And there's a lot of tedious little things here to get done. What do you think? That look good? Or? That looks good to me. All right. Well, I'm going to get up here. and I was drunk. And I and my mama got out of prison. Got out of prison. <laughs> Uh, all this fluid is so slippery i can't uh i don't think i could do this let me see that rag maybe i can even get it with this rag here uh, oh boy yeah this is fun i'm not going to be holding the camera while i do this she's kind of 
Feels like it's binding up or something, man. I don't know. <sighs> Come on. We're so close. You know, like... It looks just like a hydraulic fitting. It is. It's just, it feels like it's... it's. Is that hose in a bind? Oh, I'll bet it is. Yeah, I'll bet that hose is binding up. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Because it's on a solid brass, a solid fitting. Stainless steel fitting. Okay. I don't know what's binding up. Something. Something's binding up on it. I got a feeling it'll let us know. She's coming off though. The fluid in the reservoir looked pretty bad. I mean, it, it wasn't. It kind of had a uh, rubbed aluminum look to it. Yeah, but what's coming out of here is perfectly clean. It's making me second guess this whole operation here. Because this is... <sighs> You're not to the end yet. You can go back the other direction. <laughs> uh, I gotta rest my hand. It's cramping. I think we got her. You're there. You twisted the line into. See, it does have a little green tint to it. I don't know how well you can see it. It's... It's not bad, though. No, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. I think I may have made a little too big of a deal out of it. Well, it's over with now. I'll just let her do this for a while, and when she's done, we can put it all back together. Well, the garage is opening, so it's about that time. We've, uh, man, we did not get the belt changed. That looks like it's going to be a, a bit of a bear. That's going to be a chore in and of itself. Yeah, that belt does not look pleasant. Um, that's going to have to be safe for another. That's the way it goes, though. You know, there's still a few things to do in another video. Oh, yeah. We'll come back in another video, and uh, I'm going to actually tighten this bearing up just a tad. It's just a tad. I mean, it's ever so slightly loose. Right. So we got to do that. We changed the coolant in one of the last videos. We just changed power steering fluid. It was a little low on trans fluid. We added that. We sealed up the little leak that it had from the speedometer drive gear, tightened down the oil pan bolts, transmission bolts, bled all of the brakes, refilled the master cylinder with fluid, replaced the check valve for the master cylinder, which was bad, replaced the broken vacuum line going from the master cylinder to the throttle body, refilled with oil. We did refill with oil. Yes. We refilled the power steering. Mm -hmm. Coolant is still full. Is there anything else we did today? Or is that it? Oh, inner tie rods. Inner tie rods. Inner tie rods. Totally forgot about that. And we tried the mufflers. And we tried the mufflers and they don't <laughs> fit. So I would say that's a lot for for Epic fail, but <laughs> we got a lot done today. Now we gotta fire it back up. There's a good chance I'm gonna have to do a little bit of retuning because it doesn't have a vacuum leak anymore. We'll see what the uh, tuner says. But first, let's go ahead and fire it up. Then we can check all the fluids, make sure trans is full once it warms up, and make sure that it's full of oil. Sounds good. And it should be. It should be. Shouldn't have any problems. I shouldn't have said that either. Right? <laughs> okay. Oh. This is what it's all about right here. All the work, and then being able to fire it up and hear it run. Here we go. That's a good sign. Here we go. Are we sure we put oil and everything in it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're good, all right. Oil pressure is uh, over 60. Over 60? Over. Jeez, look at that. Wow. She's got oil. Brakes. She's got brakes too. Actually, the brakes feel really good. Won't know for sure till I put it in gear. I'm gonna say brakes feel all right. Boy, she's idled high though. <laughs> she's she's idled. Uh, good lord, 1500 RPM. Give her a little tap. It bogged. You hear that? Yeah. It bogged down. Interesting. Maybe I need to plug on my little scanner and see if it's complaining about anything. Yeah. 
All right, I'm gonna give it a little throttle and see if it's still smooth as butter. That was a lot better. So here's what happened, and I figured this was the problem. Tell the people, I told, I said this ahead of time. I was gonna have to readjust the throttle position sensor, right. reset the idle manually, and then we can turn the uh, target idle back on. So that's what I did. The TPS was at 16 degrees instead of 13. The idle was all over the place. Yeah. And now, tell them, this is a big deal. I couldn't get the idle, even with the screw to drop down below like a thousand, it wouldn't do it. Right. We were sitting at 500 and something. Wow. 500 and yeah. something. That was a heck of a vacuum leak. That's a big vacuum leak. Now that that's fixed, we were able to adjust the idle. I've got it set about 950. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the modifiers, miscellaneous modifiers. We're gonna go to, uh, we've got to turn it on first. Control off, on, and now we got to get out of this and we got to turn that target idle up to target RPM 723. I've got it sitting at, what, 950 about? Right. 948 should be really, really good. That sounds exactly like it. All right, so then we exit, exit, save to A, save in progress, and now it is saved. So now everything is set where it should be. We should be able to come in here and tap the... Uh, and the idle brings itself right back down. Yeah. Now, some people are gonna say that like 950 is too high, but they gotta remember, this doesn't have an automatic kick up. Right. There's no automatic throttle kick up for air conditioning. And honestly, with this car, 950 sounds... Sounds good. It does, and when you put it in gear, you'll drop the idle, will drop down a little right. bit as well. I don't know, guys. She is sounding... Listen to that. She's sounding really, really mean. We're gonna let her run for a little while. Let it warm up like it's supposed to. That way we can double check the trans fluid, check for leaks, yes. check the oil, check the power steering fluid, make sure everything's where it needs to be. And then we're gonna take her out for a quick drive. Is it ready? It's ready. It's ready. We topped up the oils a little bit low. We topped up the trans fluid. And let me tell you something to any of you that ever build cars and you use these types of dipsticks. That one right there is the trans. And that little stubby one down there, can you see it? That one right there. Oh, yeah, man. Let me tell you something. Putting oil in this thing is fun. Oh, yeah. Trans fluid, really fun. We Not had, We had to modify. We, we had to modify a funnel to make it work. Yeah. We, uh, we tossed on that Edelbrock intake. Air cleaner, I should say. Sorry. Air cleaner. Look how it glows under that red paint from under the hood. Oh, yeah. God, it's beautiful. I still want the brushed aluminum look with the fins, mm -hmm. but for now, that's gonna that have one to I work. I showed you with the bow tie on it. That, yes. Yeah, that's. Yeah. But those are a lot more than $40. Yeah. So, <laughs> we're about to take it out on a spin here, and we're gonna find out the main thing for me is does it have brakes at a standstill? Because it always felt like it had no power brakes. Right. None. Like, you had to really stand on those brakes, man. It's kind of uncomfortable. It's doable, but uncomfortable. So, maiden voyage. Let's find out. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Oh, that sounds good. I'm going to put these windows up. Oh, sorry. All right, moment of truth. Boy, it idles so good. It idles smooth. That's completely different from what we've had yet, isn't it? Yeah. And it's still daylight outside. That's new. <laughs> That's... Just the first daylight drive? In a while. Yeah. I think this is my fourth video on this car. Brakes feel good. Brakes feel real nice. Power steering feels nice, but it felt nice before too. And temperature's up to about 200. Oh, those brakes are decent. They're still a little hard at the end. 
just a little bit. Not too bad though. I can live with it. Does it hold good just sitting there now? Yeah, it seems to be holding just fine. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm barely holding on the brakes. Good. Definitely better than it was. All right, let's get her out on the road. Everything looks happy. And that gauge there is for trans temp. So. Boy, the front end is much tighter. Much. I mean, there's that's all the play I've got right there. Just this little. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taking that curve much better? Much better. It's predictable now. It goes where I tell it to go. Look how very nice. We're doing 60. Yeah, this is this is much better. The alignment feels fine. I'm still going to get it aligned. Because I can promise you it's out by a millimeter or two. 60 miles an hour cruising right on down the road, man. Not a care in the world. Look at that. 60 miles an hour at 2,000 RPM. Not too shabby. Well, she made it back. And she's holding right about where I told her to sit at the RPMs. Um, Michael suggested maybe we turn that idle down a hair more. Yeah. Like maybe 8, 850, something like that. We'll turn it down to 8 and see how it sounds. But you can hear it. It does sound good. It does sound good. It just feels like it's, uh, it's a little bit too much. Yes. Yeah, I agree. It sounds like the idle's too high. So we got to make some adjustments. Um, not as easy as a carburetor because we got to turn off idle control then we got to go to the screw back it off to where we want it then we got to adjust the throttle position sensor then we got to turn the idle control back on then we got to set the target idle to match where we set the screw but i mean it's really not that big a deal it takes an extra few minutes but it's not a big deal look at look at this thing guys wow it looks good it sounds great we'll check it for leaks check fluid levels and then i think we can call this video done Absolutely. well guys i think that's going to wrap it up for this video a lot got done today and there's still a little bit left to do the headliner is sagging in a couple places got to reattach that what else is there the gas fumes in here have got me so <laughs> i can't even think straight right now belt. oh the belt oh yeah the belt so we checked under the car nothing's leaking all of the fluids are full, so it's safe to drive now. So I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna drive it home. It's been sitting down here for like three or four days. I haven't gotten to drive it. I'm really excited to be able to take it on the road again and carry it back to the house, put it in the garage. I do. I put it in the garage. At least it's not road walking now. Oh no, no. Uh, the suspension, it's good. I mean, it's really, really, really good. Raising it up an inch or two. I don't remember what it was. It's about two. I think. Two inches. It made a big difference in the way the front end rides. The car rides like an absolute dream. We just got done fighting the programming. Oh yeah, that was uh, that was fun. It wanted it went back to wanting to hold 1100 RPM. Yeah, it didn't want to. We set it at what 827, 823 mm -hmm. is where we finally set it at, and it seems to be holding its RPM now. It's a good R RPM. It's not too high but it's not so low that it's surging and trying to stall out or anything. So I think we've got it dialed in. Just gonna have to drive it for a little bit and uh, let it adapt. It is one of those adaptive systems. It'll learn as you go. And uh, again, I gotta give a big shout out and thank you to Santa's workshop right here, guys. Go, where's that link? Down below the video. Go down below the video, click his link, subscribe to his channel. He's been a huge help and I really thank him for coming out here. And uh, well, you spent half an entire day yeah. Out here working on this car today. We'll get so, you a break from a Corvette. <laughs> I wouldn't call this a break, but... Oh, believe me, it's a break. <laughs> He's got a C3. He's wrenching on over there, amongst other things, man. You've got so many projects <laughs> over there going on. You're going to want to go check out 
his channel. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to drive this thing home. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to drop your comments down below. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.